I am live. However, um, I didn't plug in my little microphone here. So give me one second. Bear with me, guys. All right. Hopefully, you can hear me a lot better with this thing. Let's hope. So let me uh, let me just kind of look here. Audio. Yeah, we'll go snowball. Okay. All right. So hopefully you guys can hear me okay. Um, I hope. So I haven't done one of these in a while. Uh, one of these about me is. <clears throat> And, you know, sometimes I think it's really important to kind of know like where people come from, where their mentality is when they create something or what they do. Um, it is for me, you know, I'm one of those guys that loves to watch like all those documentaries like about Disney, Warner Brothers, whatever. You know, I like watching those kind of documentaries uh, or just in general documentaries. But, um, you know, in all honesty with me, um, sometimes those are more. I don't know. They kind of just give you a little more. Okay, first of all, I'm going to get the elephant out of the room here. So everything behind me, try to ignore. Uh, we're kind of going over. We're switching seasons like a lot of other people are. So we're getting ready for all of our Christmas decorations, and we're, we're uh, moving stuff, piling stuff on top of one another. So it looks a little messy back there. So I do apologize for the yuckiness, but pretty soon it's going to be all nice and purdied and all holidayed up. So yeah try not to look at it too much anyway <laughs> um but anyway so I, i've always liked those uh those uh those bios those documentaries about you know people <clears throat> so and that's why i kind of started this about me because i've had a lot of things over the past few years the past five years have been the most have been the hardest that i've ever had now i've been actually doing uh comic books and working in the comic field for Oh, long time now. Uh, professionally, probably about 15-ish years, 13 years, something like that. 2007 was my first convention I went to, but I was actually working a little bit before that. And even before that, I was I worked for like 10 years just to try to get into the business because I was teaching myself um, how to color and I was teaching myself how to do um, all that stuff that, that, that I saw in the comic books. And I'm like, oh, wouldn't that be cool if they have schools? Well, they have schools now, but they didn't have schools back then. So that actually are about creating comics and kind of breaking it down of who does what and so on and so forth. Um, but <clears throat> this about me is something that's kind of a little bit different. Um, I was just talking to a friend of mine who I haven't talked to in a long time. And um, I, I recently just remembered as he and I were talking that I used to be a teacher. Do you guys know that? I don't think anybody out there really knew that unless he's watching now. So I would always go out to Texas. Um, there were three Texas shows that I always did this for years. And one particular fan in particular, his name is Don. Uh, he came up to me and says, Hey, you know, have you ever done any, cause you know, you're very energetic. You're very positive. Um, you, you, you show everybody kind of how you do things. He's like, have you ever thought about teaching? And I'm like, well, no. He's like, well, why don't you come to one of my classes and just be like a guest speaker? And hey, what's up, Terry? <laughs> I'll get to that in a second. Um, <laughs> but, you know, so he asked me to be a guest speaker. Sorry, guys, I was reading a, a comment here. But he asked me to be a guest speaker um, at the University of Texas, Arlington. And I believe it was Arlington. Um, and I said, sure. So I went out there the following year and I was a guest speaker and it was really cool. So he asked me, he's like, well, do you want to come, you know, just when you come back, do you want to be kind of like a permanent guest, <laughs> if you will, uh, kind of a thing. And uh, one thing came to another and I, I actually did a few different classes um, over the years. And it was, it was really fun. It was really cool. Uh, something that just completely threw me off guard. And I was talking about like coloring comics and uh, kind of how comics are broken down, how this works, how that works, conventions and all that kind of stuff. 
I was kind of talking about all that. And uh, there was one guy in particular who really took a liking to the whole thing. His name is Adam. <clears throat> Excuse me. And um, I re I six years ago, five years ago, it was before the pandemic. That's for sure. I can't remember exactly when, but um, Adam out of the blue contacts me and says, Hey, you're going to be at the same show. I'm going to be, let's meet up. We started talking and he is a producer. Now he's a producer of animation. And I'm like, really? And he actually said, it's like, you know, thank you. You know, your, your class, your, your talk kind of helped me in that direction. I didn't do it all, but I, I kind of helped them to go in that direction, like the arts field and the animation. I wasn't even talking about animation back then. I, I wasn't even a thing I was necessarily thinking about, not full time anyway. And it was just so cool that, you know, because I was a guest speaker, a permanent guest speaker for a while at, at the university, um, that somebody decided to become a producer of animation. And now, um, I forget, it's like something in Cyanide or something like that. And uh, it's on YouTube. Uh, very adult oriented. So it's definitely not for kids. Uh, but I mean, it's very, very popular. And they've been doing, um, they've had seasons and episodes and specials, board games. Uh, they've got a lot of stuff now. And um, yeah, I mean, he's he's really booming. I'm, I'm really proud of that little guy. Shouldn't call him a little guy, but I'm really proud of that guy. You know, he... Uh, he was just a really cool guy, you know, back then, you know, when I was talking in class and kind of showing everyone how to color a little bit. And uh, he's even more, I mean, he's just, he's still the same person. You know, when I saw him, he took me around the studio, pulled Brandon and I around the studio in Texas. It was just so, so, so cool. It was just really, really cool. Uh, but that's something that a lot of people just didn't know about me. Uh, <clears throat> gosh, excuse me, guys. I don't know why. Just doing a lot of talk in the past couple of hours. Um, yeah, <laughs> but you know, going back to what I was talking about with, uh, I'm, I'm going to read this comment one more time. What was the most difficult when it came to art? Shading gets me constantly. Well, you know what? Shading was kind of the biggest pain in the butt. Um, the illustrator really doesn't have to worry about that as much. They just pretty much do the, the pencil outlines. I'm not making that sound easy it's not but what i'm talking about is like you know they're doing the outline they're setting up the stage you know uh is that that's their job you know they're getting the positions right so they don't have to worry about the shading the sometimes the inker if there is an inker sometimes the inker would have to look at that because they got to see what time of day it is where the shadows are going to drop um, and then the colorist comes in of course and then they have to do all the special effects they got to put the lighting in there most of the time when there's not an inker, the colorist has to take on that job uh, and just really kind of see. That was a little difficult. I think the most difficult for me as I was learning how to color was skin tone. Until then, all of a sudden, one time, um, Andrew, I'm going to just say his first name. Andrew, he was one of the guys who really was helping me build up my portfolio. Um, he put me in a couple of magazines that he illustrated and I colored. Um, it was like a couple of gardening, excuse me, magazines. Uh, it was kind of, it was kind of cool. It was, was kind of cool. Um, he told me that I have really good skin tones. He's like, how do you do that? And I'm like, oh, you know, I just kind of picked whatever was there on Photoshop, just the, just the basic, you know, colors and, uh, just kind of put them together and I guess just how I shaded them all together. So it, after that, it kind of got really easy. And then I started falling in love with coloring hair uh, because you can put the shines, you can put like the shadows and shades, make it look like it's moving. Um, that's really cool. That's how you can tell if you have a really good colorist or even, or even illustrator, you know, for the most part. Um, Cause sometimes you can just see in the black and white, you can just see the hair moving, but the colorist can definitely step in and really make it look 3D. And that was pretty cool for me. It was, Terry. Yeah, it was really cool um, helping him find a way to kind of get there. And because um, I know he was working, doing something else. And I don't know, I don't remember what it was, but he definitely took a, he pivoted, that's for sure. And he went in a different direction. So it was pretty cool. It was pretty neat. Um. <clears throat> Something else, I don't know if I mentioned this before, 
um, another thing that kind of a lot of people didn't know. So after, after I had my, my first kind of talk with a professional comic book artist, uh, this was many, many, many years ago, I think in like 96. So we're going, yeah, we're going back a little bit, 95, 96. It was Martin O'Dell. And he told me, uh, he's the guy who created Green Lantern. And, um, I, I didn't know who he was. He just pulled my book and said, Hey, I'm gonna do a sketch for you for free. Yeah. That's not going to happen nowadays. That's for sure. Uh, <laughs> but some people do. Um, but what was really kind of neat is when he told for me, it, it was kind of hard to hear it at first, but then I kind of understood what he meant, you know, like a few years later, but he told me, he's like anybody and everybody. And it, it wasn't just him. It was everybody. Um, all the different artists from across the comic field that I talked to at this particular at Chicago comic-con, they all said the same thing. If you want to actually do and set up here at a show, you have to be a professional in the industry. That was just a standard. Well, not anymore, but that's what it was. And I was kind of heartbroken. I'm like, well, that's a lot of talent. There's a lot of, I saw a lot of people. We all had our portfolios, drawing sketch pads, whatever. And we were drawing, waiting in line for hours and hours and hours on end, waiting for Stan Lee or whoever you're waiting for. And <clears throat> Um, and I, there was just so much wasted talent, but then I kind of understood what he was talking about later on down the road. I talked to a few other, um, um, artist illustrators about this. One of them being, uh, Greg Horn, who's out there. And he said the same thing It's like, yeah, he's like, you, there's a lot of talent out there, but you know, everyone, they just want to make sure that they're going to bring people through the door. Well, there you go. That was kind of the whole thing. If I would have heard that, it's like, well, this is like a few years later that's a whole different ball game. You know, then it's not like, well, to me anyway, it was like, it, it just kind of felt better to hear it from him uh, with him saying that and just say, well, you have to be a professional call it a day. Um, yeah. Maybe, maybe he meant, you know, me as I was like, I don't know. I'm, I'm not gonna, you know, Martin O'Dell, great, great guy, you know, um, rest in peace, bud, you know, but uh, he died a few years, years ago. And um, yeah. But anyway, I don't know exactly what he was talking about, you know, at that particular time. But however, um, I do kind of agree with that, I think, because there's a lot of talented people out there. There's a there's there's a ton of talented people out there. Um, if you want to be a guest at, at, at a show. Yes, I do agree that you have to work in, in the industry. Um, I will I will support that. But that's why they have Artist Alley. Uh, because that's where basically all the comic fan art is. And that's, you know, the up and comers. That's a great place. I think definitely people should be um, if you want to work in the industry and you want to be seen. You know, that that's a great that's that's great. Um, that's where I wanted to be. And that's kind of getting back on track of what I was talking about. So I wanted to go in there and I didn't exactly know how. But then luckily I got my first comic book done uh, from a professional company. And, um, we set up at a convention in 20, in 2007, there was a it's called Foxwood Falcons it was the first comic book I worked on. And now, cause a few other people also said that as soon as you get a book done, now the editors at the time, now the editors are going to sit down and they're going to pay attention to you because you put in the time and the effort. So now they're going to actually talk to you about books and creating and, possible gigs you know in the near future or right then and there and that's where i went now this man that i'm about to name that i'm about to mention you know he gets a lot of flack i give him a lot of flack too you know i i kind of pick on him a little bit too uh <laughs> but you know what in the 90s possibly 80s um definitely the 90s you know he was a really really talented artist he still is because he's still, you know, doing covers and stuff. And he's still, he created one of the, one of Marvel's, you know, biggest characters uh, to date. Um, <clears throat> you know, I went up to Rob Liefeld. He had a huge table. He was actually looking for colorists. And now that I had a book, I went up to his table and I talked to his wife. I think, I think it was his, it was his wife. It was his wife. Yeah. And. She says, well, you know, he's really busy right now. Can't really talk. So on. I'm like, that's fine. No, whatever. So I dropped off, you know, I gave him my, gave her my business card, dropped off the comic. And then as I turn and walk away, he jumps over, he physically jumps over the table to come and talk to me. 
Now, I don't know about you guys. I don't know too many artists that would necessarily jump over a table. I mean, he had a big booth, he had like a Ford booth. He was like, he had like his own little island or whatnot. Uh, this again at Chicago Comic Con. And, but he, I don't know too many people that would jump over a booth or a table just to come and talk to me or really go and talk to any fan. Let's face it, guys. That's true. There aren't a lot of people. So that right there is one reason why I will always have respect for Rob Liefeld. If, cause he actually did that for me and we sat there and we talked for a little bit. He gave me his contact information, you know, uh, nothing came of it, unfortunately, but it's the, it's the fact that he jumped over the table to come and talk to me, that he found the time, he stopped what he was doing to actually sit there and chat. And I thought that was cool. Now, also in the past, um, at back then, I was also emailing him as well. And I would always get like one of those just regular generic letters saying, well, thank you for your submission, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, okay, whatever. And then I knew when I saw he was going to be at the Chicago Comic Con, I'm like, oh, hell yeah, I'm going to go right there. And boom, you know, it just, it really made my weekend. And it was, it was just a really cool thing for someone to do, you know, cause people really don't knock down doors or anything to come and talk to me. So it was kind of nice that he jumped over a table, probably could have knocked it over if he didn't jump high enough. Um, but it was just really cool that he did that, you know, and because of that, is another reason why I like to go on the other side of the table, or I like to try to talk to people as long as I can. As long as we're not too busy, I don't want to ignore anybody. But I also try to talk to people at at conventions as much as long as I can. You know, if not, if I can't do it right then and there, I just say, you know, come on back or come back tomorrow if you're going to be here. Let's chat. You know, I can sit there and talk and talk and talk as I'm doing right now. But it is. Yeah. So th those are just a few things that are kind of like different with me. Um, yeah. One more thing, something that's kind of a little bit more recent uh, that you probably didn't know about me. So I have been on the 10 year wait list uh, to get my own booth at San Diego Comic-Con. Woohoo! Uh, I'm saying woohoo now because um, I just got confirmation that I have a booth. Woohoo! See, that's where it comes in. And, um, unfortunately they've given me only three weeks to come up with the full payment. Well, let's see. I don't make any sales online. I don't make any sales really anywhere else. And I have to come up with you know, four figures within now in about six days. Yeah. So, <laughs> uh, that's something else you didn't know about me. So I'm kind of like, you know, what? you know, stressed out back here, you know, over here of really trying to figure out like how I'm going to come up with this, um, with this money, this, these four, this four figures, uh, for my booth at San Diego for next year. So I'll figure it out. We'll, you know, we'll get it kind of, we'll get it worked out, but I'm just really excited that I do have a booth for next year. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to go into a lot more detail once everything is set and done, signed, sealed, delivered. Um, I'm going to go into more information about that later on down the road about conventions in general. But yeah, that's just something kind of something else that, you know, about me, uh, those things that I just, I was just talking about. And um, it's just, yeah, it's just kind of cool. You know, when you, when you talk with friends, things that just pop up that you kind of forget about. Um, there's a lot of, there's a lot more out there. Uh, I'm not going to go too much into detail, but it's just kind of a fun and cool thing. You know, um, there, there's, I guess there's a lot of things, you know, people who I've worked with, um, uh, people who asked me to work with them. Um, I was actually asked to work with Stan Lee on a piece. I'll go into that a little bit later on, Stan Lee and Lou Ferrigno. Uh, I'll go into that a little bit later on at my next about me episode. Um, yeah, I mean, really cool stuff. I mean, just really, really cool. And then it was even better. Uh, years later, after I did the, I, I worked with Stan on a on a particular print. Um, a couple years later, I walk up to him and goes, "Hey, Jeff, how you doing?" I'm like, "Oh my god, this man sees thousands, tens of thousands of people a year, <laughs> a day." At you know, a few years back, and he remembered me. That was amazing. So I don't know if it was my buddy who said, "Hey, and I'm bringing back, I'm bringing my friend Jeff," but I just 
went walked right up to him didn't wait in line just walked right up to him i felt really weird i got a lot of stink eyes from people but it was cool that he remembered my name and i'm like oh that's so cool so anyway all right guys well i just want to say thank you very much for listening to me for this about me episode um i kind of want to make this more of a thing i'm lots of things i'm kind of changing up next year is going to be a different year that's for sure um yeah <laughs> i'm going to try to do a lot more youtube videos um and uh, you know some will be live some won't be but i'm going to try to do more youtube videos because there's a lot of things that i want to do on youtube i want to start building up the youtube page um if you're looking on the Facebook page right now, please go and check out or go and subscribe to Jeff Balky Studios on YouTube. And uh, I'm really going to, I'm, yeah, a lot of things are going to change for next year, guys. They have to. They have to. I just can't sit still and sit comfortably anymore. I have to start getting uncomfortable and I have to start really pushing myself forward and pushing the studio forward because I believe in this. I'm going to try not to bank so I don't wake up my dog. But I, I believe so much in this studio and I believe in so much of what I'm doing. Um, I just, mm, yeah, yeah. So I hope to see you guys at some upcoming shows. I'm going to be releasing uh, probably at the end of this month, now that it's December, uh, the end of this month, maybe hopefully a little bit sooner, I'm going to start releasing some of the shows that I'm going to be going to uh, for next year that are for sure, that are for certain. So be on the lookout. I'm going to be, I'm also going to do a video about that. So just FYI. So again, guys, thank you so much. I really appreciate you guys uh, caring, sharing, commenting, liking, and all that stuff please keep it up. It really does make a big difference. Um, I'm not all about the popularity and stuff, but when people like and share and comment, you guys are paying attention. You guys are watching, you're taking time out and you're looking at the videos or pictures or whatever it is. So thank you guys very much from the bottom of my heart uh, for really, really just paying attention to me in the studio. It really, it really helps. It really makes me feel good. So and we can all use a little bit of a uh, little pat on the back, a little kind of a feel good fuzzy. We can all kind of use that, you know, nowadays. So thank you again. Um, this is the last time I'm going to say it. And I hope to see you guys at the next episode, which I'll give you guys a little bit of time in between. I'll let you guys know when the next about me episode is, uh, like I said, more things are going to be coming next year. And I got some cool things coming up even for the rest of the month. So take care guys. Thank you. And I hope to see you soon. Bye guys. <laughs>